here. Hey, man, what's going on? How you Good doing, to Lawrence? Meet you. you How too. you doing? Great to find you. What's going you. on, man? You guys don't have razors or what? What's <laughs> all this stuff, huh? Oh man, we, Beach buzz. I said we should have shaved. Yeah, I said we should you're shaved. right. I knew from your voice you'd be skinny like really? that. Yeah. yeah Did you? Man. You yeah, knew you'd be I knew, some man. overweight guy. Yeah, I yeah. said this guy's deprived of food. We're gonna have to get something. <laughs> Let's, Let's eat. go. Let's go start, man. Yeah. I couldn't sleep last night. Yeah. I'm like, gonna meet. We didn't know we were gonna come here. Yeah. Like, who are Lawrence Payne and Ethan Cole to convince the Ultimate Warrior to hang out with us by pool? Yeah. It was an incredible experience. This is the guy who beat Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6. He's sitting right across from us. The guy's got stories. The guy's larger than life. It was just amazing to actually be talking to him. It was incredible. So I just want to start off by telling you that I was at WrestleMania 6. Wow. I was probably seven years old, and it was one of the biggest highlights of my childhood. Yeah, that was an awesome event, man. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing for me, there's the one classic WrestleMania 6 promo where I'm talking real slow. That's when I started Hulk Hogan. All throughout the whole promo, you know. Yeah. It's I remember doing that promo. It's I don't even remember doing it. I mean, I don't remember where I was. I went so far out there. I remember thinking in my head that I was way out there. Even then, man, behind a character and doing wrestling, that's one of those times where that resistance, that voice of resistance pops in your head. It says you're going too far out there. You know, like a lot of people will say, yeah. you know, that they, that, that, you know, people want to criticize that time in those interviews and say, man, he, he couldn't understand nothing that idiot was saying. But the people that got it, got it. man, that was classic. It was the best. I right got it. Right there at the TV, man, just watching it, you know. So were you kind of like an outsider when you came in? Do you feel like an outsider uh, when you came in? I didn't get it to just be a professional wrestler till the end of time, like a lot of guys. And that's where a lot of the heat that I've gotten from guys in the business has come from. Because a lot of guys were second and third generation. And the business was changing at the time. It was becoming sports entertainment. And a lot of the guys who had, as I like to put it, had these gear bags full of technical wrestling moves and had learned that way. Take like a Bret Hart or people who learned up at Bret Hart's father's dungeon, the famous dungeon that is Stu Hart's territory. Right. The old timers, the guys who'd been in the business a long time, they saw the business was changing. They didn't like the all American looking guys coming in the business with the physiques and the bodies. They knew it was going to change. And yeah. so they would, a lot of those old timers, man, they knew how to get you in things where they would break your bones, you know? It's like cheap I mean, shots. Hulk, man, the first time he went to try out for wrestling, they broke his leg. Really? Yeah, a Japanese guy that was had wrestling school down in Florida. They he came in, he you know, got the height and the size and stuff like that. Didn't know anything about what he was going to become or be. Just thought he wanted to be a wrestler. And they broke his leg the first time. Wow. It goes both ways, right? Like he's got to go with your hits and you've got to go with his hits. Like how does that all work? How do you choreograph all this? Well, when you're in the ring, I mean, of course you're it's all you're all jacked up, the adrenaline and everything. It's not like if I just walk behind Ethan and I tapped him on his shoulder and just slugged him. Yeah, that wouldn't be so good. I wouldn't mind thing. if you did that. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't laugh. <laughs> uh, you know, you're in the ring, you're sweating, you're all warmed up, the crowd, everything like that. So even if you took a good shot, man, it's not going to have the same effect like that. I was watching some of your like finishing moves recently. And I, I had actually forgotten about this. Like I, I knew the splash, but I'd forgotten about the actual like up yeah. and down pump. First, yeah. I don't know how the hell you did that. But <laughs> did you ever hurt anyone when you dropped them? Or was that a pretty safe uh, move? Did you ever have moments where after goes like, why did you do like, that was a little <laughs> too hard? Like, thank you for that. I mean, I was strong in it, the overhead press. I remember in the gym, I could pick 315 pounds yeah. off the ground and just lift it up to here and sit down and just press it behind my head maybe six or seven times. This Mike Sharp guy, I was going around working with him, and I think actually before I was even on TV, but he weighed about 300 pounds. I have my match, and I go to do my press slam with him, and I didn't get him up. You know, I was, I, we'd been on the road, I don't know how many days, I was exhausted. I couldn't get him all the way up for that press slam. I just had to dump him off the back like that. The whole arena started booing. Wow. Yeah, man. And I said to myself, I walked around for a second, just, you know, two or three seconds. It seemed like an hour, you know? And I said, I walked over to him. He was laying in the middle of the room. I said, we're gonna do it again, and you're going up. I grabbed him by the neck as tight as I could, man. I must have choked his breath off. I grabbed him in the nut sack. Mm, the whole place went nuts, Everyone. man. <laughs> I thrive off of challenges. Right. You know, I like to be challenged in my life. I don't like the easy way. I like to be challenged. And the best way to do it is, is when you, uh, 
to establish a discipline in it is through what you do physically. Right. Because that's the hardest thing to do is to make yourself really get yourself up physically to do something, you know? Walk into a place where there's a physical challenge that you like to go to the ring at night when you're tired or something like that, night after night after night. It's the best way to build your discipline, you know, is to challenge yourself physically. Sometimes I go to the gym at like four in the morning, three in the morning because I can't sleep. Is that, you think that's fine? Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's not bad. I got my best workouts at one or two o'clock really? in the morning, man, okay. after, after I had done my job. I used to pay the guys to keep the gyms open, you know. They knew when the tour was coming to town that, you know, that I was going to be calling them and saying, hey man, can you keep the gym open for me? I'll show up about midnight. I remember dragging Wendy one time. We're coming out of a building in Canada or something like that. Regina, Saskatchewan. Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. it. And he's leaving the building. And I said, hey, where are you going, Randy? He said, I'm going to the hotel. I said, come on, man, I'll give you a ride. I get in the car and I told my driver, I said, go to Gold's Gym. He looks at me, he said, Gold's Gym, brother. I said, yeah, man, I'm going to go work out. He says, oh, man, I got to get some sleep, brother. <laughs> tell me. I, I, would let, I wouldn't let him tell me that he wouldn't go. So I drug his ass to the gym and we worked out and for a couple out. hours, yeah. Awesome. So he would always, he always had that voice. Oh yeah, that was him every day. Yeah, I mean, you guys go to, to come meals stay together, with me, like... and we would go out, and I'd tell him not to. I'd say, don't order anything, Randy. Let me do the talking, because as soon as he would talk, that was it, man. Everybody knew. As soon as he started talking, everybody would dead silence, and all the eyes would come that direction. They make an immediate connection where they heard that voice. They knew. Like, have you taken the stuff, like a lot of what you learned from wrestling? To what your life today, like what you're doing today, and like. Today. Yeah, <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, everything. My intensity for doing things, my want to d get it done right the first time. Right. You know, I tell my daughter in Indiana all the time. I said, if you don't do it right the first time, it's never done. It's not done until you do. So do it right the first time. I can remember being on the road, you know, getting three hours sleep a night and getting up in the morning and just, just summonsing up this attitude in this from some place just no man I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know uh, back away from I'm gonna rise up to this challenge I have before me every single day with that kind of attitude and you take that and you just keep it's a good one to have actually. yeah I think we need more of that I mean, I, that's a big part of why we tracked you down to find you I mean yeah. I think like you've inspired us to kind of like grab hold of our lives and like do take something it by the bigger with it yeah